It's not about, to me, acting, what I call shamanic theatre, isn't about learning to act, it's about learning how not to act. <laughs> you know, how to be our authentic self. And within that, there's thousands of characters. I and, love that. You know, there's thousands of archetypes and aspects of our, of our own self that we can draw on. It's already all there. But how do we become clear enough as channels um, and authentic enough as humans to, 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 to bring that out? Um, so that was really the style of, of acting that I learnt. It was to do with mask and uh, very body oriented rather than just, than just scripts. How do we draw from our own, you know, richness as, as, uh, as you know, we're, we're fractals of, of the bigger universe, as, as I know oh. you know, Cara. You got to accentuate the positive. Wow! I feel good. A little bit of feel good goes a long way. You're listening to Karen Swain, teacher of deliberate creation, accentuating the positive, showing you a way to a better life. Accentuating the positive, it's not just fad, it's sanity. Who in their right mind would accentuate anything else? Hello and welcome to another show, Accentuating the Positive with Karen Swain. Wonderful to be with you again. I have a beautiful, delicious, another Australian goddess, Shah woman, Shah man, healer. I don't know. We call them shaman, but it should be Shah woman, really, to introduce you to. Her name is Jane L. Worthy. Welcome to the show, Jane. Thank you, Karen. Lovely to be here. Lovely to be with you all. <laughs> And remember, if you're liking our conversations, please like and subscribe and subscribe to any of the platforms that you're listening to and send us your comments or your emails. We love hearing from you. If you want to know what else is going on, join our newsletter. Now, Jane, I've actually known for quite a while, but we bumped into each other at a meeting the other night and you were singing and doing your drub and singing the language of light. And I was thinking, well, the other night, a few weeks ago, and I was yeah. thinking, oh, it'd be lovely to put you on the show because I do love to showcase Australian light weavers. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Show you to the world and you've had a fascinating journey. I'm going to read out your bio, let people know a little bit about you. I was looking on your website and I love this. Welcome beloveds. We are at the new level of our evolutionary journey now. I just love that as you meet, you know, you go on your website and you meet that Jane is a light worker sound healer pilgrimage leader and presenter bringing through sacred sound and energies to guide and assist you in these ever-changing times and boy are they changing we're having fun down under aren't we with all the fires and oh yeah oh yeah and New Zealand with their um there's been a big explosion on one of the islands of big volcano eruption so it's yeah. fun times ahead Jane works as a teacher presenter performer and healer working through as a medium of rhythm, sound and story, offering inspirational talks and presentations to help us remember our true purpose on earth. After a number of early years in the corporate world, she mm -hmm. longed for work and creative expression more aligned with her soul's true calling. She received a diploma of dramatic arts in her late twenties and studied as a, and studied psychology while working as a professional actor and storyteller. How long did you do that for, working as an actor? Oh, gee, on and off. Well, I still, I still perform, uh, yeah. but sort of making money from it uh, solo, probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years, I guess. Oh, wow. And I've, I've actually sent you, uh, I've actually sent you the wrong bio. I didn't mean to, to say that here, but anyway, there it is. So. There it is. <laughs> I think it's fascinating because, you know, we're speaking to people who are working in the corporate world or maybe they're actors and they, they have a calling. So it's actually really fascinating to hear, you know, after years of the work that you're doing to hear what you used to do. <clears throat> anyway, so yes. after a profound awakening experience, which I want to explore, you were called to a powerful ancient path of the, frame drum over 25 years you have become australia's australia's leading player and maker and researcher of this ancient instrument which has been used as professional technology for deep transformation for thousands of years in 1992 jane uh, a priest you apprenticed in new mexico usa uh, with shamanic and african drum makers and healers and studied yes. the frame drum with world-renowned New York percussionist Glenn 
Velez. 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 Yes, Velez. Oh, I haven't heard of him. Was that fascinating? Oh, fascinating. Amazing. Yeah. On returning to Australia in 94, Jane founded the Owl and Lizard Drum Company in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales. Jane's teaching, performing and studying has taken her to many parts of the globe where she has worked with many great human beings, including sound healer Tom Kenyon. Love Tom Kenyon. We love Tom. <laughs> and a, a rhythm master, Renard now these people I don't know, Flashel, Flashel. Reinhard, Reinhard Flattischler. Oh, wow. I haven't yeah. heard of him. Shaman yeah. Elizabeth von Madras. Yes. How do you say her name? And, That's it. And scholar and teacher Nikki Noble. Jane believes that humanity has moved to a new level of our evolutionary journey. Well, we have. <laughs> and... and People awakening and changing their jobs and doing different things is all a part of that new level of evolutionary journey. Absolutely. So what happened in your profound awakening experience? Well, it has a couple of stages to it, really. So the first thing that happened was I grew up in a very, uh, had a very traumatic, difficult childhood uh, in a very, working class part of Newcastle, New South Wales. Right. So just north of, north of Sydney. Uh, very, very difficult, quite dangerous. And I, for some reason, I was drawn, I was walking home from school. I was 12 years old and I was drawn to a drum in a, there was a music shop in Hunter Street, Newcastle. I had to pass it to get to the bus stop. And I saw this drum in the window and I had absolutely no money, but I was just so called to it that I, I lay by it. Remember lay by, you'd pay something off and I'd pay, you know, $2 a fortnight or something like that. And I remember I got this drum eventually after a few months and I took just a simple round flat drum. I, there was no music in my family. There was nothing like that. But I was so called to it. I took it home. And I remember it was late afternoon, you know, after school. <clears throat> and I sat on the big old green couch. And the late afternoon sun was coming in. And I didn't play it. I had no idea how to. I held it up to the light. And I saw the veins in the skin. And I smelt the skin. And I went into a complete altered state from the smell of the animal skin and the, the textures. And I had a, a very direct uh, guidance that said, when you grow up, you'll work with these smells and these textures. And it was quite, it was quite a, it was like my first shamanic experience. And then, of course, you know, life went on and I think I probably even hocked that drum over time in my late teens and there's a much longer story here but the way that it comes back in is that uh, I went and lived in England for a few years and became a punk and did all sorts of things and, and came back and um, eventually was working in the corporate world and I went to Sri Lanka just on a holiday and I saw a drum just like the drum that I'd I'd been called to when I was 12 and I just bought it and it hung on the wall in my uh, my apartment in Sydney and it just sort of hung there as a decoration and then one uh, one afternoon we had a, a party a pretty wild party and it came down off the wall and other instruments came out and my friend was playing this drum with a fork with the pointy end of a fork and went straight through the skin. And so a friend said, look, I know how to skin a drum. And uh, he said, come to my studio. He got me a new skin. I went there a couple of months later and I soaked the skin in the water. And when I lifted it out of the water, I had the remembrance that I had when I was 12. And again, I went into this complete altered state and got some sort of, I still don't know exactly, some sort of download or transmission that my, at least part of my journey was to work with these sacred materials and to understand and teach the path of the frame drum, which I didn't know so much about then, but now understand as um, 
this, the traditional sacred instrument of women that was played for thousands and thousands of years. It was the main instrument for ceremony and worship and altered states and uh, music making. And so I just, I became obsessed with making this. I, I actually quit my job in the corporate world. I was working for a multinational uh, computer company and I rented a little studio in Annandale in Sydney and I just started skinning things. I didn't know how to make drums, but I began uh, skinning garbage bins and all sorts of things and just began to go into a completely different uh, world that was so different to what I'd been doing with high heels and it was shoulder pads back then. We were talking the 80s. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the journey goes on from there, but that was like the first. There was a number of awakening experiences, but it was that remembering. And in most of my work now, it's what I'm teaching through rhythm and through uh, the sound work and the story work and the, the working with activating the light codes in the land is I'm not really teaching anything. I'm helping people remember what they already know. So that was um, my experience of remembering what I already know. And then that journey through the, through the path of this ancient frame drum has taken me, you know, I guess to, to where I am now in many ways. Do you think that this remembrance that you had as a child was a remembrance of a past life or a future life or maybe, maybe uh, just something that was given to you to do your work in the world? Did you have any sort of concept of why you were having this remembrance this these visions it it felt absolutely like past lives past and life. when i began uh researching the frame drum uh, because back then you know it was really not very known it's coming online so to speak now as uh consciousness is raising because it's a technology of transformation rhythm and sound and um I, I researched and realized that for that, like I said, for thousands of years, the frame drum uh, was the main instrument of worship and transformation until it was made a, an act of heresy for women to play around 200 AD. So that's really? another whole thing. Yeah. So whole explaining to people that don't understand drums and are not watching us, what does it, that are listening to us, what does it yes. a frame drum look like? It's the handheld drum, isn't it? The it's not necessarily, some are held uh, in what, what we know. A, a frame drum is any drum where the diameter of the head is greater than the depth of the body. So okay. if you think of a grain sieve, they evolved from uh, the grain sieve. So the men were the hunters of the animals, but the women were the skinners of the animals. Right. And, uh, and the frame drum was born. The earliest known depiction I've got of a frame drum uh, is from 6000 BC. There's a woman holding a very simple frame drum, exactly like the one I was called to buy when I was 12. Um, right. So they're also played with the fingers of both hands. And most cultures um, in the world have some sort of a frame drum. It's been, uh, uh, yeah, it's been inherent in the culture because, I mean, we can get into, uh, you know, the power of repetition and, and vibration and, and frequency and, uh, and what happens with rhythm and how it alters, you know, our brain waves. Some cultures absolutely understood that. Some didn't necessarily understand it in a logical way, but it was still their sacred instrument so we know more about uh, the Native American sort that you hold in one hand and play or Siberian or the, the Irish uh, Boran right. right you know that you do the jig and the reel um, that style but there's also many many styles and I've developed new styles I've been playing and researching this amazing simple instrument for oh, about 32 years now so it's so been it's been a journey so what so okay so you're working in the corporate world and you left is that when you went into acting after that or yes yeah. i went i went into acting from there as well as um beginning that journey with the frame drum towards the end of my two-year full-time um study in acting yes so i went into i went into acting and i went into uh a type of acting that wasn't so so much around scripting 
it wasn't learning to me acting what I call shamanic theater isn't about learning to act it's about learning how not to act you know how to be our authentic self and within that there's thousands of characters I and, love that you know there's thousands of archetypes and aspects of our of our own self that we can draw on it's already all there but how do we become clear enough as channels um, and authentic enough as humans to, 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 to bring that out. Um, so that was really the style of, of acting that I learned. It was to do with mask and uh, very body oriented rather than just, than just scripts. How do we draw from our own, you know, richness as, as, uh, as, you know, we're, we're fractals of, of the bigger universe as, as I oh. know, you know, Cara. Absolutely. Look, I think that, you know, acting is such a play with that channeling, really. Just, um, you know, yeah. I was having a chat with Paul Selig a couple of years ago. Do you know him? He's a channel. Yes. And he used to teach uh, acting for years. Anyway, and, and he, he had this ability to tune into someone and then just sort of take on their energy and be them, and it, which is like a which is what actors do, right? They tune yeah. into a character and then they sort of take on, they sort of wear that energy and they become this character. And yes. I, look, I think that we're all acting. We're all like Shakespeare says, we're all actors on a stage. Yeah. And we're playing our roles, you know, yes. we're playing the daughter, mother, friend, next door neighbor, you know, worker, healer, shaman, teacher, student. I remember when I was a young naturopathic student, I was living... Uh big household in Bondi uh, full of actors and people in the film industry. And I was a naturopathic student, a girlfriend, a stepmother, because he had a little five-year-old, um, then a friend, you know, a party animal. I just seemed to be kind of taking on all these roles. And I got, I thought to myself, and then I'd go out and work, you know, waitressing in the corporate world. And I'm like, how many roles can one person be? But yeah, so we're all playing roles in many ways. Absolutely. And I think, you know, a trick is as we get older, um, we tend to narrow those, those roles, you know, as well. And yeah, like similar in the 20s, you know, you're this, you're a waitress at the same time as being that and a naturopathic student and, um, and we can get a little, a little uh, stuck as we get older. I'm now yes. just, a, I'm a healer. And I'm, you know, and I think uh, it's really important to keep uh, uh, play and joy alive and you know yeah. not take it all so seriously yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, you you have just reiterated something that I was thinking last night oh really <laughs> absolutely yeah. we've still got a bit of lag I wonder if we'll continue a bit of lag with the sound and vision but anyway we'll continue we might need to reboot in a minute okay. uh, yeah we were watching this movie with the time of the six sun and I was having that thought last night. I was thinking, you know, I was watching people drumming and singing and talking about all this stuff and sharp. I was thinking, and a lot of them were not smiling. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like they were very yeah. serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, talking about the future and the earth and everything. And as people came to my house, I was joking and I said, I've got a party trick for you. And I'm sort of playing the jokester and I'm like thinking, you know, you can be a serious, shy person, channel, healer, and you can be your crazy, silly personality and jokester and trickster as well. Like we don't have to be so serious when we're sort of doing, you know, God's work or universal oh, yeah. work or whatever you want to call it when we're you know, the healer. I think that um, I was thinking about that. So funny that you said it. One of my favorite teachers is uh, Michael Tamora, who is just laughing the whole time. And yes. yet he's one of the most profound channels, mediums, teachers. In fact, I recognized him as one of my, one of my spirit guides, one of my mob in physical form. And I'm uh, like, I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And he's just laughing the whole time. And yeah. yeah, I think that that's what we have to remember is, as we do this work to keep it light and <laughs> have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it light. I always say it's all in, it's, it, it all matters, but none of it's important or it's all important, but none of it matters, you know, more to the point. And Ooh, I love that. Hang on, hang on. It's all important, but none of it matters. I love that. Yeah. I yeah. love that. That so goes, it's... that goes with that saying Deepak Chopra used to talk about, cause he was my, he was my inroad into God, if you like, because I couldn't come at the God yeah. that was presented through religion. And so I guess I was an agnostic. Yeah. And then Deepak talked about God as the infinite unified field. And I'm like, 
oh, now that's a God I can, you know, I can digest. And he used to say that, you know, everything in the universe, yeah. the matter of the universe is non-matter. It's all energy and information. And he used to talk about it in this, or he does talk about it in this scientific way. And then he'd say, so nothing matters. <laughs> so it's not matter, you know, this stuff. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going yeah, to... Matter doesn't matter. <laughs> matter doesn't matter. It's not matter. So how did you get introduced to the light language? Because it's really interesting. You're, you're sort of tuning into that ancient wisdom of the elders and the drum and all that comes with that. And, and the bowl. And, and the bowl. And now you're, well, not now, but you've been doing it for a while, long time. You're doing this with yeah. light language. How did you get introduced to that? It just, I, I found probably about oh, 10 years ago that it just started to come through. And I, it started with, I, I was uh, doing channeled writing uh, and just started doing some channelings for people, just friends at first. And it was, you know, literal words. And then I found little bits of light language were coming through and I really, my journey has been around trusting that. At first, my biggest thing, and I, I hear this with students now, is like, why little old me? You know, like, you know, I'm not worthy of, of this. It must be a trick. And so, so for a long, long time, I really resisted it. It's just gobbledygook. You know, I knew it was out there. I felt contact with ETs and, and the love of God. And, and uh, that was all really real for me. But somehow to be... Uh, someone that I guess had been chosen in a sense, even though I, I chose it, uh, you know, that was my contract. I actually chose it, but it took a long time and I, and, uh, for me to really accept it. And then once I, I remember standing up on a cliff up in the Blue Mountains and just going, okay, all right, I say yes. And it was after that that, um, I, I really was able to go, okay, I accept it. And then it started to come through more. And, uh, and then over the years, I was, have been able to identify, this is the grandmothers. Uh, this is a different energy stream. This is the Pleiadians, Pleiadians. and the Hathors and the, and the Magdalene energies. They're the ones that, uh, they're the ones that I work with and the Magdalene energy and, uh, came came much came much later and been running retreats to connect with the magdalene energy in france for a number of years um so yeah the light language came through mm -hmm. yeah sorry oh i was just going to say it's interesting isn't it to marry aliens with um like you know palladians well what do you call them aliens with things like mother mary sort of to marry those energies you know mother mary is sort of seen in this religious context and yet the palladians or the syrians or the arcturians or the andromedans you know they're carrying that same christ consciousness or mother consciousness and and so we're at a time now where we're bringing all these sort of ideas together as this oneness really the the sort of the ancient and the the woo woo sort of galactic and light language and yeah so it's 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 fascinating we were talking last night after watching the movie about um i recently saw an aboriginal elder say that uluru eh, that what you see is 10 percent of what it is it's this massive yeah. like spear that goes down into the earth and he said that it was a piece of the Pallades that was broken yes. off and when Gaia was formed it was just a molten rock and to activate Gaia to seed life into Gaia to seed consciousness into Gaia they took this piece of the Pallades and they put it in her and that's what Uluru is and right. um, I've had one of my you know Garnet Schulhauser who's been on the show who goes out of body and chats to his guide and goes around the universe amazing he called it a beacon a beacon and i always wondered beacon what's this word beacon mean and and then this aboriginal elder described it as a part of the palladies that seeded life and um so yeah fascinating. yeah it's it is so fascinating and and the anangu people also you know believe that the pleiades uh in a literal sense and an energetic sense as well have i have a base within the 
within Uluru, which I really believe is absolutely true. Right. Within, because within the rock itself? Or... Within the rock itself, yeah. Within the rock itself, yeah. Wow. And so they're so excited that the people aren't able to walk on it anymore. Oh, yeah. You know, for so I... many reasons. Right. Uh, I have a friend that was an Indigenous friend that was posting. She was there as they were taking the spikes out of her, the, the, that was the rail yeah. that people And there was something so profound about that. I don't know what it is like taking those. Yeah, there's something so profound about that. Yes. So it, It's like taking the, shackle, like taking the shackles off, yes, literally pulling out those metal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's a base in there. Wow. Years ago when I started learning about Ascension, 20, 25 years ago, I, somebody told me that Uluru was some big crystal that sort of pulses and activates. So that was the first I had of this little puzzle piece. And then just recently watching this Aboriginal elder uh, on YouTube talk about it being a piece of the Pallades, it's just like all yeah. falling into place. Because so many people yes. talk about it being sacred, but exactly why is it sacred? How yeah. is it a beacon? Yeah. Why is it a crystal? You know, it's start, starting to make sense now. Yeah. And it's it's one of the um, one of the nodes. Uh, uh, from my understanding, there are twelve nodes, main nodes. There's lots of little ones, but twelve main nodes uh, within the uh, the crystalline grid, and they have their twelve corresponding what are called nulls, and they work in pairs. and And Uluru is one of the um, one of the the nodes that uh, are like a, a vortex or a relay station into the crystalline grid. So I don't know if it's made of crystal. Um, maybe there's crystal in there, but it's certainly connected to the crystalline uh, grid. matrix grid. Yeah. Matrix of, of, of Gaia. Yeah. So, Jane, what's your um, guidance on what's happening with Australia with the bushfires at the moment? Have you been talking to your mob about that? <laughs> well... A little bit. I have, uh, once I can get through, you know, uh, the, I, I've had a lot of the, the human despair and being there to, to work with setting up grids for friends on land, one that has 980 acres of rainforest that's mm -hmm. been burning mm -hmm. and another friend just up north of, of Sydney. Um, and so there's been a lot of, yeah, work, I've been working more with, with that setting energetic grids um, but you know I think I do believe it's part of a global warming climate change absolutely um, partially human made absolutely but I, I try and stay with this much bigger picture that so that it's just well it's less painful for a start to mm -hmm. see the bigger picture and it feels like um, a massive cleanse mm -hmm. for me. And, uh, you know, as much as I hate to say it's somewhere in the bigger, bigger picture, it's, it's necessary. And for us here, it's uh, with what's also happening with the water table being drained and yeah. different things like that. Yeah. It's fire. It's fire. Um, for other countries, it'll be flood and earthquake. It's, uh, yeah, I, it's absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me, it's absolutely a sledgehammer moment for humanity. Uh, you know, last night a friend came over and she's been suffering with the smoke, <clears throat> coughing and going on. And she said, I'm really angry. I'm really angry. The government aren't doing anything. Aren't you angry? Aren't you angry? And I'm like, no, I'm not angry. Um, being angry is, you know, being angry can activate you, but it doesn't, it doesn't help really. And um, so she kept asking, why, why, why? And so I tuned in last night and the guidance I got was exactly, you know, I, the way that we've mismanaged water in this country the way that we're mismanaging, um, you know, creating more Adani coal ma mines. Oh, yeah. The yeah. way we're managing the environment, you know, Australia is a paradise and, but the, yeah, the way that the governing, the governing people are mismanaging, it's just a sledgehammer wake up call. It's Gaia yeah. going, wake up wake and up. start making changes. And unfortunately, you know, the politicians aren't suffering as much as the people, but, um, yeah, it's a bit of a sledgehammer moment. And yeah. it, it's going to, you know, it's, it's, it's here in Australia, but it's more sledgehammer moments if people don't start listening around the world globally. Yeah. You know, I've been talking about this on the show for a while. Little did I know that it would be so close to home, uh, but there we are. There we have Yeah. It. Yeah. Oh, look, absolutely so close to home. And, and everyone seems to be... Uh, 
they are waking up a little bit now. And, and I think what we've got to do is take up our own agency now. And that's a great opportunity instead of like, excuse me, blaming the government. Yeah, you can blame them and they're, you know, whatever they are, but they're inept. They actually, they can't do anything. They're actually, you know, I, I sort of say, well, I don't have it. They're not my government, you know. It's time that we all become self, much more self-governing and, uh, you know, create community and do it that way because, which is sort of what you're saying, you know, they're not going to... Mm -hmm. They're not going to do it. They're actually, well, they don't they, know how. They allow business to do what they do, like create big factories yeah. that take so much water and they just drain, you know, creeks and lakes and things that the water yeah. can't nurture the rest of the land. And because of these big yeah. factories and factory farmings and coal mines, I mean, coal mines. Cotton. Cotton. Yeah, you wouldn't think that cotton would be a problem. But, yeah, look, so just mismanagement, really. They can't really stop yeah. climate change but they can um, manage better. I mean, unfortunately, they are the, power, the governing power at the moment. We were talking last night about how governance has been so bad on this planet that it ha the governing structures just have to crumble and we have yeah. to steward the planet more locally, as you say, create community and, and be more uh, responsible for what's happening rather than leave it up to governments, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, definitely mismanagement, but uh, we've got to we've got to do something each of us instead of just blame. And and we Aussies can have a tendency to, you know, play the blame game. Win, whinge and blame someone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so when were you introduced to the um, Pallades? Did I mean how did they appear to you? Just as the language of light, or did you sort of see them through your third eye? Did they have sort of any other contact with you? First, ways. first with writing. Mm -hmm. uh, first, when I was just doing some channeled writing, and uh, I wasn't, I wasn't in a in a very good space emotionally. And uh, but I found this gave me a lot of solace to just um, be writing. And so I'd write, and stuff would come out, and then I'd have a little, I'd just go oh, for a second, and then I'd write again, and it would be a completely different handwriting. And I've got a piece that's like three individual. Uh, different, obviously different entities that have come through. And the messages all kind of tie in together. But one was very technical, uh, not non-emotional, loving, but, you know, just very matter of fact, very technical. Another one was very loving. And the other one was sort of in between. And it was like, oh, who are you? Who are you? And eventually I just, over time, as the, the light language sounds, and there were, you know, messages to just keep trusting. Uh, and I had a period where everything fell away. I lost my house and my partner and my workspace and my community, and, and I was homeless. I was actually homeless for a number of years. Really? Yeah, I was. And uh, that was from 2008 until uh, 2000 and, uh, about 13. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I just went with it because the change was so massive that it was like, and then my car um, burst into flames. So I was oh, like, oh, it's left. I know it was a, it was a full on time. Ooh, yeah. But it was like something in me had to be stripped down to the bone until I was just like, okay, I'm yours. You know, it, it, for me, that's what it took for me wow. to just go. I, I trust okay, okay, guys, I trust now. And then it could really start to come through. So when you say you were homeless, were you just staying with friends or were I you was, sleeping in your car? I, I slept in my car a few nights. Right. Uh, I was staying with friends, um, camped out at Lane Cove, um, camp site, Lane Cove National Park, camp yeah, site yeah, for yeah. a while, yeah. and, uh, and house sitting in some, you know, houses that came up. But, yeah, did sleep in my car for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, I've and uh, trying to be a... Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, go on. Oh, go no, we've got this lag. I have a few friends that are doing the house sitting thing. They're sort of homeless. They're just going from house to house and, and they don't have their own sort of place to call home, but they stay in beautiful places like mansions, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> but they're not, it's not Sometimes. their home. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting to have that sort of nomadic lifestyle. I like to have a stable place to land, but some yeah. people don't. Yeah. Well, I do. I do now, and I've mm. I've got that now. But um, um, 
but it was it was for me that's what it took I had to be on my knees um, for me to really uh, relinquish to what it, to what was trying to come through that I was just resisting and resisting and I also had um, from my uh, a lot of early childhood wounding there was a real fear in me well if I open to you I don't know who's who's going to come through and that's very common I don't know what energies that will be that will want to you know literally come into me um, and so the the trust had to get really you know really really strong really strong in me to be able to to just open and what I realized was that um, the biggest protection that we can ever have is to have an open heart. Like in the 70s and 80s, it was all around close your heart, you know, block your heart to protect yourself. And it was like, no, blocking the heart is the, is that you're so non-protected then, you know, but opening the heart and being in that vibration of, of the love frequency is that is a great protection. Um, and as I got into is the only protection really yeah well yeah. it is yeah, yeah. I, it's the look i went through that too as a as a as a channel and a medium being so empathic and feeling so many energies and 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 then going from guru to teacher to psychic how do i protect myself and really the only protection was to clean up yeah to, to open your heart to clean up your vibration to not feel guarded or fearful or worried or stressed to actually shift your own vibrational frequency and you can only attract like attracts like right so absolutely you can only attract that with people but you can only attract that with energies and entities as well thought forms um galactic spirit guides you you know like attracts like if you have an open solid loving heart you're completely protected so to speak because you can't attract different energies which are yes. deemed as negative energies yeah it's the only protection, really. It, it really is. I mean, in sound healing, it's the law of harmonic resonance. Right. You know, and uh, so it makes absolute sense in that way. You know, if you've got two tuning forks, you probably, you know, if one's in C and one's in F sharp and you, you know, you ping that one, you know, this one doesn't vibrate at all, doesn't recognise it. It doesn't, it's not in the same vibration. But if you have two that are in the same frequency, you ping this one, and hold it just anywhere near this one will start vibrating because it's 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 the it's the law of harmonic resonance and so we've also got a responsibility um, just going back to the fires like our thought forms and our emotions also as you know go into the grid you know go into the matrix Absolutely. and so if we're going, oh, I'm angry and I'm the government and, you know, and I, I, I st it still happens. Um, Which they're doing today because it's Friday here in Australia at the moment and, you know, Greta Thunberg has got everyone mobilised on Fridays for climate change marches. And I saw on Facebook last night that they're all out there screaming today because of the fires, even more of them, you know, organised by the Sydney University. Right. Uh, they're all out there. I haven't seen... People were telling me last night that it's not an angry thing. People are out there singing and loving each other and it's, it's not an angry thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what's happening today, you know, the, what the vibe is out there today with the, with the demonstrations, what they're putting into the matrix or the grid, as you say. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, at least, uh, well, you know, and they're mobilizing. I think, you know, I was just I was chatting this morning with someone that, like, when we were kids, it's like, wow, we had no idea this was coming. Where we where we find ourselves now, you know, in these new times, whereas kids today don't have that luxury in a way as well. You know, yeah. they know what's they know what's coming from an early age, and and in a way that they, they, they've lost their innocence, they've had to. And maybe that's the step up that's completely in alignment with what has to be done. But I really, you know, I honour that they're gonna, it's gonna be a big life for them. Absolutely. Well, you know, when you say they've lost their innocence, or this is chatting, uh, I think they came for it. So they knew what they're up for. You know, the being oh, yeah. incarnating, I've seen a few, you know, newborns lately, cuddling some newborns and I'm like, you're coming now. You're brave. <laughs> like, you, yeah. you know, they're like, thank you for coming. Like, they're up for it. They, they know what they're coming into. Um, they didn't come to play and be like, they came. They're coming for a reason. So, 
Oh, you've got to honour them. Yes. You've got to honour them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, and assist them, I think, too. Do you want to speak a little bit about how sound and frequency affects us? Because I know you're working with sound a lot and how yeah. does it affect uh, the energy matrix of our body and what can it do? Yeah. Well, you know, we... We are sound. I mean, the whole world, you know, Nada Brahma, the Indian, the Sanskrit expression, the world is sound. And the Bible says in the beginning was the word, but I think it's really the word is, is meaning, you know, um, uh, uh, like a sonic, sonic expression, you know, into, into form. And so we are um, physical, so-called physical, but really we're not, as we talked about before, we're, we're, we're frequency and we're held in human form because we're working within a particular frequency band that makes us human. If we were to change our frequency band, we would be other than, other than human. And so when we raise our frequency through the medium of sound, um, we, we can actually change our physical form, which is wellness or not wellness, depending on, you know, what, what the frequency is. So frequency, um, which is just sound, you know, sound is frequency made audible. And um, so working frequentially is so easily has the ability to change our cellular structure, um, our emotional state, our brainwave patterns, um, our levels of joy or sadness um, to rally us, you know, if we to gather together, to separate us. There's, you know, so many stories I could go into, but um, it seems to me to be the medicine of, I was going to say the medicine of the future, but it's now, you know, and um, everybody seems to be getting involved in, in sound. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Years ago, I, 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 we don't understand the power of sound. You know, people talk about ancient aliens. They talk about uh, the pyramids were built with sound by just like a sound that might not, might not be audible, that can lift unbelievably heavy things. Like what sound can do is so, yeah, what sound can do is, we're only just scratching the surface. Um, yes. I, I've said this on probably every show where I ever talk about sound. It, it, well, I read years ago in the Seth material that they talked about a civilization that they, they, um, they altered their DNA and they, they took out aggression out of their ability. They couldn't be aggressive and they couldn't defend themselves against the elements and they moved underground in earth. And this was billions of years ago. And, they used sound to propel their vehicles and to paint and to cook and sound was their energy sound was it to heal and yeah that that's yeah. like we're using electricity and but they use sound to create light and to cook with and yeah it, it's just mind-boggling what sound can do we're yeah it's mind-boggling Oh, ab absolutely. I'm, I'd love to be able to use sound to, to cook, clean the house. But anyway, I'm not, not quite that evolved, <laughs> not that quite that evolved yeah, yet. Um, and uh, there are some beings called the Hathors. Mm. Are you familiar with the? Yes, 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 absolutely. So in, in uh, ancient Egyptian times, the group of beings called the Hathors were uh, anthropomorphized into the the goddess Hathor, mm -hmm. and she's depicted with the cow, the cow ears, mm. um, cow ears because for sound. She's always depicted playing the frame drum um, because it was the main instrument back there. And uh, they say Tom Kenyon uh, and others say that well, what they say is that they came to Earth uh, twice to gift. The two different cultures, uh, these gifts of how to work with sound, once to very early Egypt, not the later kind of later pharaohs because they got into, you know, ego and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, but the early ones um, and gave them that technology and they did learn how to build structures like the pyramids to levitate. You know, if you just change something's form through frequency, it's no longer dense. Mm -hmm. You know, and it can you can you can 
lift it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, certainly that the Hathors and others, I'm sure, that the Pleiades, they've always been around. They're like our elder brothers and sisters that seeded. Yeah, parents almost. Humanity. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like parents. Uh, so the, you said the Hathors came twice. They came in ancient Egypt. Did they come during the time of Atlantis as well? Were they here then? Uh, I look. I don't know about that. I know that they came. Uh, the the um, ancient Egypt. No, not not Lemuria. Lemuria was a bit purer. It was more the Pleiades in that really early stage. Mm-hmm. The other time I know about was in ancient Tibet. Both cultures yeah. using sound. I mean, still in Tibetan cultures, you know, sound is uh, absolutely used for transformation. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Hathors came um, back in the time of Lemuria, but certainly that was a that was a Pleiadian base, which of course mm-hmm. is Hawaii, as you as you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, shall we do some sound? What should we? Uh, yeah. What are people wanting to work on? Maybe going from fear to love. Maybe working on some stressful emotions and soothing their stressful, changing their frequency. I don't know. What do you think people would like to listen to today? <laughs> I think the another thing that I'm finding people are really wanting to hear is like encouragement for humanity. How are we going to keep going? How are we going to, you know, cope with this? Something around bringing in some love uh, frequencies to just to help us deal with it all and go, it's okay, it's okay, it's all going to be all right. Um, even though it's going to be very difficult, if we hold that broader picture, it's going to be going to be okay. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm thinking to uh, to play the crystal bowl mm-hmm. and and sing, but or, or would you prefer the the drum? What what, what up would to you, you, darling one? Your okay. choice. <laughs> You're the sound master. <laughs> I reckon we'll go with. I'm just going to move this back a bit, so and I'll talk a little bit about this. And I just have very simple instruments, and I don't have very many because I just find one. Uh, I have one crystal bowl. This is it here. It's a gold, gold-plated uh, crystal bowl in the 528 frequency, which is the love, uh, love frequency. It also works with repairing DNA. Um, and so because we are quantum and because we are a fractal of everything, I find that one does everything. Many people say, well, you've got to have C, a bowl in C for your base chakra and one in D for your second chakra, as though the laws of the universe follow the Western scale of music. I mean, you know, we're so much bigger than that. So, you know, I find one does it all for me. Uh, So I'll just tune in and uh, how long do you want me to go for? Minute, two? Oh, yeah. See how we go? See how we go, yeah. Okay. A few minutes, yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. Shine a cut. 
te main oela ta a andu klaya sile iti dira mai klaya shulo kloya te e inda klaya shulo ita pa a a andu kloya ta klaya a a siklo kona piti sala ma atu kwe no ena he klaya o shula pa ta asa labo inda klaya no ita klaya he mandaya o kloya shai o to to isele beya no ita kla shai na mag ta kai o le se e i i ina he solo in the clay o sele e e e e e no sha in the moe sala a a ta kala a a on the glo o o o o ea mai o sha koya parush kai na sono doe mai na kai mai na kai a parush kai no solo in the clay a What we could hear was beautiful. It was a little distorted, but um, oh, such mm. softness, such love. Yes. Such, oh, such softness, such love. That was really a love song, this, a love letter, that one. It, I could feel them. It's, Don't worry, we're loving you, we're holding you, we're here for you, we're supporting you. It was just everything that you said it would be. <laughs> Oh, and that's, yeah, that's just in a, in a, in a minute. I find the Hathors are really, I have a, a CD MP3 called Hathor Love Song that is uh, 25 minutes, I think, and it's all about that. It's all about encouragement for humanity through, through love, really. Beautiful. Yeah. From the Hathors. Yeah. From the Hathors, yeah. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Oh, mm. We could offer that as a download for people listening. Are you up for that? Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. To my page, I'll put the link on for you to um, for Jane's uh, website. Um, okay. So, what about drums? Have you got any drums there? I just happen to have one here. <laughs> Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so this is a uh, this is a type of frame drum. Uh, that I, I've made this in 1992. So this is a type of frame drum that uh, uh, has a wooden handle at the back. That's a little patch from where it got a bit damaged. So I find uh, beautiful uh, tree branches and fit them into the handles. I call this the ritual drum. There's many styles. This one has seven, seven sides, but some are round, some are nine-sided. And this is a, a beautiful deer skin. You can see the spine up the centre of the, of the skin. I'm still making drums after 30-something years. So uh, do you, um, somebody said to me the other day, I was saying I, I want to get a, myself a drum. I haven't got one. But, you know, maybe she, she said to me, maybe you'd like a vegan drum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> made, made out of something else but not animal skin. Do you do well, that as well? No. I don't. Um, if you've got a vegan drum, you're basically working with plastic. No, uh, no, you can use this different leathers. They're making leathers out of like um, uh, pineapple husk and okay. mushroom. You can make it out of mushroom. and so they're Yeah, but not, that's for leather. Le leather. Leather's different to rawhide. Mm -hmm. uh, leather's had a lot of different processes, whereas rawhide is just raw hide. I could go into that, but probably you don't want to hear about that. But, you know, my, my thing with drum making is we have an opportunity. I absolutely understand the vegan thing. And I think eating no meat or less meat and dairy and all that is absolutely a wonderful thing and will absolutely contribute to healing the planet. But where we are in our evolution now, it is still happening and making a drum gives you an opportunity to take a, a dead 
bit of animal, really, you know, the skin of a, of a living, a once living being and the timber from a once standing tree and enter an alchemical process where you bring them back to life in a new form. Right. So you take these dead things and they have happened. It has happened. It's true. And give and, and bring it back into, into a sacred, the form of a sacred object. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I feel like I have a responsibility to the animal and the tree as well, that I, what I make is an instrument of power or what I offer when I run uh, drum making workshops is that you, you enter a process where you give thanks to the animal and the tree and, um, we start with the whole hide. It's not cut into a circle for you. You get the whole hide. So you see, this is where the head was. This is, this is, a, this is where the tail was. This is where the legs were. This was a living creature. Wow. Wow. What an honor. You know, what, what an opportunity to, to um, bring this creature back to life in its new form. Mm, beautiful. So, so that, that's, that's my, my, my take on that. Your take on it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, not everyone's. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's just see uh, what comes out because we were talking about harmonic resonance. That what what will come out with the drum, um, because it has such a different frequency, will be something completely uh, different. Um, so let's see. Um, how are we? I'll just see how we're going with this. How are we going with this microphone? Is that uh, distorting? Is that distorting? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Kai pai lo e nai a, shi klai mo to e le a. Mo ya ya, ko to e le a, How was the sound? Not so good on that? Yeah, it was a bit distorted. Oh, uh, we're, having, we're having fun with tech today. Um, you're, you've completely left the sync as well. You're, you're sort of moving in a different time frame. It's like you're in a different dimension, Jane. <laughs> yeah, we've just sort of lost. There we are. You're back. Yeah. I'm back. There's, there's, you're talking, but we're looking at a different. Anyway, it's been an interesting experience with tech for today. I've had this in the last couple of days. I don't know if it's me or. What's happening? Maybe my computer needs to be replaced. Oh, look, I think it might be the, the smoke as well because um, the satellites are above the smoke. And I know on sort of sometimes really cloudy days, it's slow and weird. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's got something to do with it. Maybe. Might be just yeah. the frequency. Yes. But I look, you're obviously a lot better live. Um, you're amazing live when we don't have Thank any you. of these microphone issues what you bring through is just sublime. It's just beautiful. You've just got incredible access to all these different galactic and ancient and incredible loving frequencies. And um, it's been an absolute joy and a pleasure having you on the show. And I would just like I to say to people, 
you know, go see you live. Um, do you travel around the world? Because I know you're in here in Sydney, Australia. I'm here in Sydney, Australia. I'm just back from Perth. Yes, I uh, I work in uh, New Zealand. I run a retreat, uh, co-run a retreat in France with the Magdalene Energies every year. And I do work in the States and uh, we'll be back in the States next year and really want to do a lot more work in that beautiful country. So happy for any offers of coming to the States and working as well and, uh, and in yeah. the UK. So yeah, I get around a bit. And in the UK. What about up there in Scandinavia? Maybe if anyone's listening to this in Scandinavia, they can take you up there and you can play up there. I would absolutely. I have a real thing for Scandinavia. I would absolutely uh, love to love to go there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real shame the tech hasn't happened today. Yeah. So, so well. But uh, I can see your face, but you're not moving your mouth. But oh, I really? That's <laughs> weird. Anyway. Yeah. Oh. I think we, we probably should end it there and um, we'll come together again another time. Maybe we've got better tech microphones and things. Somewhere. Yes, yes. Yeah, your work is just sublime. It, it, it's, it's a shame people couldn't hear it in its full resonance. Oh, well, thank, thank you. And your work is also sublime. Thank you, Karen, for all you're doing. And, yes, you were talking about um, uh, putting a link to that My Hath or Love song, which would be... I'd love people. So to. for people listening on audio, what is your website? My website is www.returntolight.com.au. Return to light, which Return is uh, to light. what we're all doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, com. and do you have social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, I, Twitter? Uh, yes, yes. Facebook is uh, Jane Elworthy, the healing power of sound and the frame drum. Beautiful. Yeah. Twitter, no, we don't do Twitter yet. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Thank you Jane. so much. Blessings. The wonderful Jane Elworthy. Oh, she's a master, really. She's just brilliant. The examples that she did um, do not showcase her sound, what she does. What she does with the bowl and singing over the bowl is incredible. And I, I wish you could all hear it. But unfortunately, the microphone that she had didn't allow that. Um, the frequency of the bowl might be too high pitched for a microphone. I don't know. Didn't translate through the microphone. Um, hopefully, she'll send me a little bit of the Hathor love song and I'll put that up for you to listen to. And um, for the whole thing, you can um, contact my, go to my webpage with the, that has karenswain.com slash Jane Elworthy and you'll see the links in her bio and her, the link to her website there and you can you can get that download, but um, maybe you put on festivals or put gatherings, you have groups, uh, women's circles, you'd like to invite her wherever you are, somewhere in the world. She's amazing. She's absolutely beautiful. Her, her sound is incredible. I didn't know about her homelessness. Wow. That was a lesson through fire. That was amazing. The surrender and trust, surrender to all the material thing and just trust that this frequency, these beings, this love is flowing through you and it's just guiding you and showing you where you need to be. Yeah, that's what it's all about. And uh, how's it over on your side of the world? <laughs> We're having fun here in Sydney with all the fires and the smoke. Yesterday was unbelievable, but it's cleared up a little bit today and it's cooler today. So, uh, yes, we are um, being tested. Can we stay positive and loving and grateful even when you can't breathe and when your house burns down? I have so many friends that have been affected by the fires. I'm, you know, I'm always complaining about being in the city, but I'm feeling very grateful for being in the city <laughs> right now because the fires aren't right in the city. At least they're not where I live. They're more on the fringes of the city where it's more bushy and where, where the city backs onto the bush. And uh, I've had quite a few friends with properties around Sydney and out of Sydney that have um, been affected by the fires and they've had parts of their property burned down or they've had their whole property burned down. Yes, test by fire. It's been some interesting times here at the end of 2019 in Sydney, Australia. More to come for around the world more of this to come can we stay positive and loving and grateful in the face of the contrast we experience here on earth can we tune into that frequency of love i loved that hustle love song 
just exquisite. I'm going to play more of that. Right, coming up, I've got more galactic goddesses next week. And then I'm going to take a bit of a break, I think, over Christmas and New Year. Come back maybe towards the end of uh, January or at least with with showcasing guests on the show. I might do my own recordings and just do some channeling and talk to you like I'm talking to you now. But after next week, um, we're heading up to Christmas, I'm going to take a break with guests and we kick off again next year in the Inner Sanctum. I've got to organise my guest teachers for the Inner Sanctum. And uh, let me know if you what, you what you would like to explore more next year and who you'd like to have on the show. Maybe you're thinking about more language of light or consciousness technology. I had a chat with Penny Kelly yesterday. We're going to put on some classes, online classes, exploring consciousness and intuition and maybe plasma science. I don't know if we'll go into the plasma science, but I got a download from my mob that she has to structure her work. She worked with Lefty Levengood, Dr. Levengood, for many years, 20 years, who was a, a physicist, a neurophysicist, a physicist. And so she had this consciousness information and he had this science information and they married it together and so they're explaining consciousness through science and it's incredible her work is incredible it's very heady it's very for, it's very much for people who want to understand the mechanics of consciousness and who we are and how we operate and how we you know spin out from the oneness of the source and become individualized souls and then individualized with the ego and body look it's it's school basically it's 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 kind of like going to school and learning how the the mechanics of the car works and some people are interested in that i know my curious mind is but uh, also when we understand how we operate we understand ourselves better it's like when i studied uh, physiology and anatomy as a naturopathic student when i understood how this body operated better i understood my human experience better and um, how to look after this body so it's a bit like that really and so next year we're going to do some intuition how to expand your intuition, clairvoyance and clairaudience and all that good stuff, empathy and uh, consciousness, nine-week program. So I hope you'll join us for that. People that are part of my Inner Sanctum group will get special prices, <laughs> but it's separate to the Inner Sanctum. It's going to be separate and Penny will be mostly teaching and I'll be facilitating that and helping her and um, having them, you know, piping in every now and then like I do on the shows. And uh, so that's, that's coming up next year, starting in February yeah so yeah 2020 here we come thanks for watching big love to you if remember courtney beck's coming up this weekend uh, oh this will come out this weekend but anyway join our inner sanctum she's going to be channeling krishna and isis and all good stuff and talking about her experiences and um we might quiz krishna about what's going to unfold next year and uh yeah it's gonna be good <laughs> I'll be exhausted today. <laughs> Remember to get that book Awakened by Death and I'll speak to you soon. Love you all. Big love. Bye for now.